Hello, I'm Susie Vance from Creating from the Heart, the Artistry of Living. I'm here with Sandra Young, who is an amazing author. She's just published her first book, and we're very excited to talk to her about uh, that book, but also what got you here. So, Sandy. <laughs> That's a definite creative journey, Susie. And, and thank you for having me come and have a conversation today. It's That's always okay. fun. Uh, mainly, yes, we're talking about my debut, Divine Vintage, which I set in Michigan City. But before that, let's, let, let's just go back a little bit. Um, when I first met you, you weren't doing this. You were doing a few other things. The last stop, yes. I think, was at Unity Foundation. Yes, when I was working, mm -hmm. I was vice president at Unity Foundation before I retired, and I just really had the urge to write. We were doing wonderful uh -huh. things, collaborating in the community, uh -huh. you know, the quality of life benefit. And I also was executive director of Healthy Communities of LaPorte County for 11 years. Uh -huh. But I just really missed the writing, and I realized I need to dedicate my time to that with this goal of publishing a, a book, you know, finding a publisher and moving forward. And wouldn't you know, I persevered and here <laughs> I am. Did you always know you wanted to be a writer? I did. I wanted to be a writer before anything else. I just love the words growing up on a farm in Illinois. I loved words. I loved books. I escaped into books. And so that uh -huh. was very young. But you know, you know what happened is I got into theater. Theater consumed oh, really? to me. I did. I started doing like five shows a year. Yeah, I just Ooh. enjoyed the creativity of that. Uh -huh. That's where costumes started to intrigue me. You know, the the vintage costumes, the fun things we wear on stage. So you're noticing. <laughs> I'm noticing, and so that leads into me starting to collect. Uh -huh. And so as I collect vintage clothing. You know, I just start having this passion for it. I'm researching it. I'm wearing it on stage. I'm wearing it for special events. And eventually that poured out into a book form, a, a writing, you know, a story. And I just had so much fun when I was writing that. And you know, that was the genesis of what has become Divine Vintage. So tell me about how do you do this? I mean, how do you take the, all those ideas once you get them on paper? And then how do you find a way to publish them? Well, first with the writing, there's two ways to go about it. There are people mm -hmm. who are plotters. They outline very precisely. Then there are pantsers. I am a pantser. What's I, a pantser? That means I sit down at the computer and my characters speak to me and they just, oh, you know, the words awesome. spew out onto the page. And I let them lead me. But then I go back and I tweak it. I, I improve it. And that's what I did with this one. It is a mystery. It's got dual timeline romances wrapped around a historical mystery. And uh -huh. I call it a ghostly sizzle. <laughs> That's a good word. But, you know, it wasn't originally a mystery. Mm -hmm. I basically went back in and built the mystery and the 1913 timeline and heroine later on because I just found that so intriguing and it made the story, you know, a lot that much better. richer. That right. much richer. Right. You know, I added emotion and setting. It's set in Michigan City's Uptown Arts District because I wanted that creative vibe, you know, that, uh, uh -huh. that they live in this creative area and uh, the uh, crime of passion occurs in a beautiful old Edwardian 1913 mansion. So <laughs> I feel that's part of it, the ambiance. It's, it's really interesting. You know, I, I for a while participated in a writer's group out here with a woman from Columbia University and she would come and she would say, Susie, just give me a little more juice. I need the juice, <laughs> right. and it sounds like the juice is in you. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, you have to nurture it. I started taking a lot of classes. I was doing online webinars. I was going to conferences. I wanted to improve my craft, mm -hmm. and so that was part of it. Is as time went on, I learned so much more about building stakes, building tension, mm -hmm. and it, I love it now because I see local friends who are reading it, and they say, "I couldn't put it down." You know, I just, <laughs> I just had to oh, know what fun. happened, and I'm like, "Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to hear." To I built that they call it romantic suspense sometimes, like on Amazon, that's a category for it, and I never thought of it being romantic suspense, but there is that suspense angle of who really committed this 1913 murder and 
will they determine who it really was? Was it the husband? <laughs> or was it one of these other suitors who pops up through the diary entries? And the vintage clothing plays an integral part because that is what, when the uh, heroine, when she opens her Divine Vintage Boutique in Michigan City on Franklin Street, she can empathize with clothing and kind of get visions from the past right. through clothing. So this Edwardian Trousseau gown leads her into this vision of the lead up to this oh, wow. murder. And, but she sees it differently than local history. So that's uh -huh. what compels her to try to solve it with the help of the handsome but skeptical descendant. Now, tell me, is this on Kindle yet? It is on, well, it's for sale on Amazon and then barnesandnoble.com, walmart.com, Ingram, Kobo, Apple, iTunes. It's all over the place. And is it it's for sale audibly? There is not an audio book done on it at this point. You know, it's got it's Kindle and it's paperback. Okay. And I am with a traditional small press, which means that they took care of this beautiful cover. It is. And did they design it or did you? They designed it with my input. Awesome. With my input. And this is I loved it when I had it and in front of me and you know, they format it, they put it out there for you and do some marketing. Um, and I get royalties. So I didn't you know, pay to have it published. Now I'm making some royalties slowly off of it, Good. which is kind of fun. Great. <laughs> That's fabulous. So, <clears throat> what's next? <laughs> you, know, you know, what's next is I was first of all building an author brand, which I was behind the eight ball because I had not thought about branding yes. and that I needed to have this platform and branding. Of course, I wrapped it around vintage clothing. Of course. <laughs> and so I have a website, sandrayoungauthor.com. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I basically designed something out, wrote everything, had pictures, but I couldn't really master the WordPress. So I worked with Sarah Group out of Laporte. Mm -hmm. They created my website and um, I started doing social media. I got on Instagram, beefed up my Facebook, and really started connecting a lot, which is super fun with right. authors and readers around the world. Good for you. And locally. But now, because I've had so much feedback from people, and really a lot of people say, what's next? Where's yes. the sequel? Well, I am working on the sequel based at Laporte's Little Theater as a plot line. Oh, I love this. That's fabulous. So I'm adding in that ghostly mystery angle again, a yes. historical ghostly mystery, the romance. To create the tension, to keep people turning those pages. Exactly. And it's based on the character who's the assistant in Divine Vintage Shop. So Marcy gets her story now, but I'm having <laughs> a lot of fun with it. And like I said, I'm spewing it out right now. It's the skeleton, you know, I'm putting meat on it, right. but it needs a lot of fleshing. But it does. I've got a few chapters. It's interesting because I'll be writing and I think my characters, I'm going to do one thing. And the other day, they wanted to go they a direction. They say, uh, and, no. <laughs> yeah, they either say no and they, they zero off and I go, okay, fine, you know. But the other day, they were trying to be Namby Pamby and I went, mm, no, no, you need your darkest moment right here. And so I slammed them. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm going to slap did you around. Did they pay attention? They did. They were chastised and they went, okay, <laughs> okay. How long do we have to wallow in this? Yeah, right. <laughs> Very good.